Hello, my name is Charlie Timmons, and welcome to What's Your Story? We all have one, and on this show, I'll be interviewing people to find out the story behind their story of success. My guest today is Bill Borton. Bill is the principal of W.R. Borton & Associates. He calls himself a retirement risk manager. He helps baby boomers manage those risks in retirement that can be managed, costs associated with health care, long-term care, and longevity through the creative use of insurance and income annuities. He functions as an independent insurance broker. With over 35 years of experience, three and soon to be four professional designations, and is a Series 65 investment advisor representative. Bill, welcome to What's Your Story. Thank you, Charlie. And we're going to get at it, right? It's my pleasure to be here. Bill, I want to cut to the chase. There's plenty of people out there that offer financial advice around insurance and other products. Mm -hmm. What makes you different? Why are you distinctively different? The audience wants to know that. Well, Charlie, let me start uh, by quoting John Riechenthaler, a researcher from Morningstar, who said, all financial advice is conflicted. The business model exerts its effects. <laughs> and so I like to quote John all the time because there's so many different types of people in the insurance and financial services world, and everybody's a wealth manager, a financial advisor, a financial planner, except they're not. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, the only true financial advisor is a Series 65 or Series 66 registered investment advisor or works for a registered investment advisor and is an investment advisor representative. Words matter then. Yeah, they do. And those advisors are required to maintain the fiduciary standard, which means that they have to operate in the best interest of the client. They work for the client. If you are a career agent with a life insurance company, or you work for one of the big wirehouses, or you work for one of the large independent brokerages, you are possibly a captive agent. You may be a registered representative with a broker dealer. Uh, you are regulated by FINRA. You have to maintain the suitability standard. And you, in many cases, are working for the company and your client and their money are a means to your end. And so that's a part of the problem. Over the last 35 years, I've seen examples over and over again of where people didn't really know the difference and trusted someone who may or may not have been working in their best interests. I take a holistic approach. What's that, holistic? I'm an independent insurance broker with 35 years of experience. I'm appointed with at last count about 30 different insurance companies. I'm not working for one who's got a sales contest to get me to Aruba. And I'm also a Series 65 registered investment advisor, although I don't manage any money. I like to collaborate with other advisors who do because if they're a financial advisor and I'm a risk manager, we can work together in tandem for the client's best interests. Well, who are the clients? Who do you target? I use the term ideal client. Well, so who are your ideal clients, Bill? I like to say I can only help people that are willing and able to be helped. <laughs> and a lot of people are willing, but I can only help people that are able as well. And so I focus on baby boomers who are no longer spending all of their money on their kids and who are looking to plan for a future, hopefully a long life, and who have assets to protect. Most of my clients have between one and 10 million of invested assets. That much? Yes. They're lucky, and they're lucky to have you. Well, thank you, Charlie. I wanna go to break, and when we come back, I have some more specific questions to ask you. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna to go to commercial. We'll be right back. When did you see the sign? When I needed to jumpstart sales. Build attendance for an event. Help people find their way. Fast Signs designed new directional signage. And got them back on track. Get started at FastSigns.com. Welcome to Live Better Longer, the show for baby boomers who want to improve and even extend their retirement years. I'm your host, Bill Borton. On Live Better Longer, our viewers meet and learn from a wide variety of experts and thought leaders who share their knowledge on subjects ranging from portfolio management to nutrition management, from insurance, social security, and reverse mortgages, 
to annuities, Medicare, and Roth IRA conversions. Not just thought-provoking and actionable information, but why it's important to you. Tune in every Tuesday at 11 on RVN TV for reliable and unbiased information from experts in their field who are committed to helping you live better longer. Is your business growing and now you need a new and bigger building? Has your organization outgrown their facility and now it's time to expand? Do your hobbies require the need for more space? If you're paying rent but now you want the advantages of owning, the prospect of financing, construction, and on-time completion may seem out of your reach. General Steel Corporation has the answer. A pre-engineered steel building from the General will not only look great and satisfy almost any need, but you'll save time and money. Our team will help you create your building and deliver it to your location. We offer design services to help you present your concept to board members, bankers, or for fundraising. And the General can even help with financing. General Steel is a name you know, with quality backed by a 50-year structural warranty. Call today and find out how easy it is to have the building you want. You may even save up to $20,000 with rebates. If you need space, you need the General. Welcome back to What's Your Story? I'm here with my guest, Bill Borton. Bill's the principal of W.R. Borton Associates. Bill, you've been in the business for a long time. My sense is right now you're really focused on this live better longer. What happened that caused you to pivot into this and really focus on it for your clients? Well, Charlie, it was a combination of things. For 17 years, I was an employee benefits broker and consultant. And when the recession hit back in 08, uh, it became very difficult for me to be in that business. And it got even harder when the Affordable Care Act became inevitable. And so I knew I was going to have to make a change. So I took a look around at my age, my network, my professional designations. I looked for where there was an unmet need. And it deter I determined that focusing on long-term care planning and insurance for high net worth clients would be the way I wanted to go. Makes perfect sense. And a couple of other things occurred uh, actually before that time. One was my parents uh, both ended their later years with dementia. And that was really difficult for my brother and sister and I, and we had to really work hard to pull together to create a long-term care plan for them basically on the spot because they hadn't planned. Oh, wow. And that was really uh, gave me a real sense for the, the urgent nature for many people to have a plan. And the third thing was a close friend and mentor of mine who's 17 years older than me contacted me out of the blue and said, I need long-term care insurance and I need it fast. And I said, you know, I'm not a long-term care guy, I'm a group insurance guy. And he says, but you're the only one I trust. So I reluctantly said I would help him, did a lot of research, made a lot of calls, did a lot of reading, and what I found really shocked me. I learned that all, millions of Americans have a huge hole in their financial and retirement plan, and that is the lack of any long-term care plan. And so I set out wow. to focus on, again, long-term care planning and insurance, and I figured I would help, again, people that were willing and able to be helped, so I focused on people that were high net worth. So we're getting a better picture of what you do. Mm -hmm. Why do you do this? What is the driver behind this? Well, first of all, Charlie, there's a little red book that somebody gave me a number of years ago called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg and John David Mann. And when I read that book, uh, I saw myself in it a lot. And so that was a reminder of ways of being that can help me better serve people. I also got in touch with my heart and got out of my head a little bit more. I used to think that if I knew everything and I was really smart and I sounded like I was really experienced and all that, that would be good enough. But then I was reminded of that old cliche, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Absolutely. And again, the quote from Bob Berg that all things being equal, people do business with and refer people who they know, like, and trust. And so I set out to focus on having conversations with people to find out what matters most to them, to find out what their hopes and dreams and fears are. Do they know what their blind spots are? Uh, what preferences do they have? What have they tried in the past that may have worked or not worked? 
So how did that improve the quality of that conversation with them? Well, when people believe that you're listening to them truly and you're asking good questions and really interested in the answer, it really tends to drive down the relationship tension and really start to promote that know, like, and trust. And unless that trust is present, people aren't going to be completely open and candid, and I need that level of candor in order for me to really help people. So give me a sense of how you go about getting and attracting clients and how you work with them and what you're doing to promote Live Longer Better. Well, there's live a lot- Live Better of, Longer, right? Yes. Oh my God, I can't help. I can't necessarily help people live longer, but I can help them live better. I retract my statement. That's fine. So uh, I get clients in a whole bunch of different ways, Charlie. One of the sources is working with registered investment advisors who don't sell insurance and recognize the need for risk management, and they trust me to work with their clients. This sounds like a special category of investment advice. Yeah, well again, we talked before about those advisors that are fiduciaries that are fee only and work for the client. They don't sell or manage insurance, okay. and yet they are obligated to do what's in the client's best interest, and so a number of them choose to work with me to help have that conversation with their client and work in conjunction with them. I get it. So they influence decisions. In Correct. A way. And I really enjoy those types of collaborative relationships. And then I you know, have worked very hard on my website. I blog. I post on social media a lot. I have a show here on RVN TV every Tuesday at 11 called Live Better Longer. I trademark Live Better Longer. And what I mean by Live Better Longer is not just about money or insurance. It's about doing everything in a holistic way so that you can get to the end of a long life and have had it be as good as it can be. People have referred to you as a connector. How does that work for your clients? How do you connect them? Well, I'm a specialist in what I do. Again, I, I'm a, technically a registered investment advisor, but I don't manage money. I'm not qualified to manage money. So I believe in specialization. And so I focus completely on retirement income and retirement risk management planning. And so I complement the other legs of what I call the stool. You know, most smart people have got a four-legged stool, an investment advisor, a tax advisor, a legal advisor, and a risk manager. Many people have a three-legged or even try to use a two-legged stool or have stools with legs that are wobbly or different lengths. And the chances of having a good outcome unless you have a really solid stool, are less than ideal. So again, I have a conversation with people. One of the things I find out early on is who are the other people that they trust? Who do they work with? Because I need to know, are those people qualified? Are they going to be collaborative? Or are they going to be adversarial? What do you find to be the biggest misconception some of the people with whom you have conversations have at this stage of their lives? about investments, about insurance, about long-term care? Well, a lot of people think that everybody's about the same or that if they open their mouth and say, I'd like to talk to you, that it means they're going to get pitched and closed on a sale. Uh, there's a lot of people in the financial services industry that are in a hurry. Uh, they have carrots and sticks that are causing them to be in a hurry and want to get to the sale. Uh, I operate at the pace of the client. And we go from having the conversation to my describing how I work and the conditions basically that I require in order for us to go through the process. And then we talk about the planning process. We actually go through the planning process. I then do the solution development where I tailor individualized solutions for clients. After and, you gather the information. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I could be into uh, the third or fourth conversation before the client ever sees anything that I've designed for them. And then if I've done my job right, and I've gotten all the facts and all the preferences, and we really understand one another, and I know what matters most to them, there's not much selling involved. Well, it seems to me that you're not selling people. You're setting conditions up for them to buy what's right for them. Exactly. Why don't we take a break and come back? I have a couple other questions for you. Let's go to break. We'll come back with Bill in a few minutes. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Do you see the sign? When I needed to jumpstart sales. Build attendance for an event. Help people find their way. Fast Signs designed new directional signage. And got them back on track. Get started at FastSigns.com.
Hey everyone, this is Donna Valente, sales performance and leadership coach and founder of the Enterprise Sales Institute. Join me every Wednesday at 11 o'clock here with RVN TV on That Sales Show. On this show, we are going to share with you best practices in emotional intelligence, sales process, and sales strategy with some of the industry's biggest thought leaders. So, don't forget, 11 o'clock Wednesday, here with RVN TV and That Sales Show. Got a quarter? Welcome back to What's Your Story? Today, we're trying to find out what the story is behind Bill Borton, my guest, principal at W.R. Borton and Associates. Bill was talking about his methodology of working with his clients around long-term care and other insurance-related products. Bill, how do you go about developing a tailored solution for your clients? Because my sense is you don't deal with shrink-wrapped products. No, you, surely. You take the time and you, so, Give the audience an idea of how you work with those clients. Well, a lot of it depends on the stage of the person's life uh, and their age. Uh, some of it depends on what they think their priorities are. Uh, so for instance, uh, I usually talk to people about long-term care, again, 50 or when they're no longer paying for their kids, all the way up to maybe even their late 60s, but ideally in their mid-50s. I start talking to people about Medicare planning around the time they turn 64 and a half because that's when they get the Medicare card in the mail and start getting all the solicitations from people. Been there. And then uh, retirement income planning, uh, we can begin that conversation you know, in 50s or you know, before you retire or even after you retired uh, because a lot of people don't have pensions any longer and so they need to supplement Social Security by creating a personal pension using income annuities. And so when I'm talking with people early on about long-term care planning, I ask a lot of questions. I gather a lot of data. So some of the things that I need to know in order to be able to develop a solution for someone are their age, their marital status, their health history, uh, what sources of funds they might have to fund a long-term care solution. Do they have an old life insurance policy with cash in it that we can do a tax-free transfer? Do they have lazy money or money sitting around in CDs or money markets that's available? Hmm. Uh, are they inclined to want to pay a premium every year or would they rather be one and done and just pay one premium? Do they want guaranteed payoffs through a policy that pays whether you die conveniently or inconveniently? Uh, with the possibility of a refund of their premium, or are they willing to take a flyer on a chance that they may pay money and never need the insurance and have spent the money? Well, it's, it's complicated, to yeah. say the least. So once I, once I have all the answers to all these questions and all these preferences, the solution starts to become obvious. Could you share a story that could demonstrate to the audience about how you work through a solution and help somebody resolve a challenge they may have had? Mm -hmm. Well, I had uh, a client and his wife who were still working, early 60s, about the same age, pretty healthy. Uh, they had sufficient assets uh, in their minds to self-insure. And a lot of financial advisors that don't sell or manage insurance and don't understand long-term care planning and insurance say if they've got enough money they can self-insure and that's that, right? Check the box yeah. and move on. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, for a lot of reasons I won't go into, this couple wanted to talk about it and wanted to find out what was possible. They'd read some articles, they'd heard about these hybrid policies, and they wanted to know more. They weren't at all convinced they wanted insurance, but they wanted to know more. They were suspicious. Yeah, curious. So uh, I helped them understand a lot of the issues around the probabilities of needing care, the timing, the care settings, the cost of care, what impact inflation would have, at what age they were most likely to need care. And uh, when we got to that point, 
they started thinking, hmm, maybe transferring some of this risk to an insurance company might make some sense. How do we go about doing that? And so I gather more information about their finances and about what was possible in their health histories. And again, you peel the layers off the onion and it got to a point where I was able to design a life insurance policy where you could accelerate the death benefit, pay down the death benefit while you're alive, should you have those triggers for a long-term care claim, and he would receive up to 25 months of care. Why that? Because men generally need care for about two years. So what I'm hearing, I think what I'm hearing you say is you help them get clarity around their situation, mm -hmm. share with them the different options, then align them with the options that's probably best for them. Yes. And then once they see the process, and once they understand why I come up with the recommendations I come up with, it's like you can't customize insurance. It's a filed product, but you can tailor. I can take an off-the-rack sport coat, and I can tailor it so it fits you like it was made for you. It all starts with a conversation. And in researching you for the show, someone referred to you as a conversation catalyst. I like that. All right. Well, share it with the audience. What does that mean? I think it's pieces of what we've been talking about. Yeah. Well, again, I have to find out what matters most. Okay. And in order to do that, we have to have the conversation. And so a lot of people are thinking I'm going to come in and try to start pitching them on insurance and going to close them and all that. But that's not me. I really, I like designing and having people buy insurance, as you mentioned before, but I don't, I don't like selling. I'm not a closer. And so my whole conversation is about developing that know, like, and trust so that people will be open with me so they'll tell me what it is that I can do to help them. And I need to spend as little time as possible getting to that point. So I've learned over the years how to ask the right questions, how to listen really well, how to follow up with other good questions so that people will say things to me like, gee, Bill, nobody's ever asked me that before. Or, mm. uh, you know, if I'm working with just an individual and he's you know, meeting with me for the first time, he'll say something like, you know, even my wife doesn't know that about me. And for some reason, you know, I engender trust. Well, speed to trust, as you mentioned mm -hmm. before, uh, enables people to share information with you that you need to know to tailor the right solution for them. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like. Absolutely. Sounds like to yeah. me. I'm not going to just pitch a product after you give me a few facts. So what is the value proposition? Let's net it out for the audience as we're coming close to the end of the show. Mm -hmm. What is the value proposition of having a conversation with Bill Borton? Well, first of all, you're going to get independent and objective advice. Not that I don't have my own bias. I have preferences around different insurance companies and different ways of designing products or solutions, but I'm not trying to win a sales contest to Aruba. I don't just represent one company and then pretend to be a broker who can represent others. Okay. So I also move at the pace of the client. And once we agree on the process and how we're going to work together, the only obligation from the client is to be candid with me. And if they want to stop the process at some point, just tell me. And that's okay. And it would be nice if you told me why, but that's up to you. So what I want to do is move as crisply through the process as the client wants to go and get them to a point of decision with no pressure, no obligation at any point in the process so they can feel good about taking some steps so they can live better longer. To what degree do you become a true trusted advisor to them beyond, beyond the, the financial advice you give? Well, I guess I could demonstrate that by the recommendations I have on LinkedIn and the fact that a lot of my clients come to me through referrals from other clients and from other advisors. You know, again, you mentioned before, I engender trust. And that is because I go out of my way to be different. Not just to say I'm different, but to be different. Not in a hurry, independent, have the experience and the knowledge and the professional designations, but I'm not trying to bore people with all that. I'm trying to get drill down right again to what matters. Before we end the show, have we covered everything that you would like to share with the audience at the moment? Well. I guess the last thing, Charlie, I would say is if somebody would like to have the conversation with me. With you, one-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one. On -one, yeah. If you or you and your spouse or partner uh, would like to find out what you need to know or get questions answered or 
uh, figure out whether you have some blind spots you're not aware of, or maybe you're a little unsure about the advice and counsel you've been getting, or maybe you have old policies that you've purchased and you're not sure if you should keep them, or maybe you uh, are thinking about long-term care insurance and you don't know, you know what you don't know. Yeah. Uh, I will gladly have a conversation with you with absolutely no uh, obligation whatsoever. And that conversation will last about 60 to 90 minutes, and we'll both walk away from that conversation knowing more about each other than we started, and you will know whether you want to continue the conversation or not. The worst thing that happens is they get answers. Yeah, they'll learn something. They'll get value out of that conversation. Though anybody who wants to have the conversation with me, I will give them a copy of Rewirement, Rewiring the Way You Think About Retirement, which was written by my friend and colleague, Jamie Hopkins, who's the co-director uh, of the retirement income plan at the American College in Bryn Mawr. Tons of books out there, Bill. What makes this stand out for you? Well, you know, Jamie has got more initials after his name than anybody that I know. Actually, he was a guest on my show uh, back in May in conjunction with his book being released. This book covers the retirement planning process from the standpoint of the relational aspects of it with spouse and family, the psychological and emotional aspects of it, he deals with procrastination issues and all that. And then he talks about all of the stuff. He talks about reverse mortgages and using home equity. He talks about Social Security. He talks about Medicare. He talks about retirement income planning using annuities. A very holistic approach. It's the most unbiased approach that I've seen. And this book is well written, easy to read, and it could either be something you could read cover to cover or it could be a desk reference. Excellent. And it's equally valuable to a consumer or to a financial advisor. Excellent. So you're going to have information come up on the screen shortly of how to get in contact with Bill in order to get the book and schedule a meeting with Bill Borden. I'm sure they'll benefit from that. I would believe you're correct, Charlie. Bill, thank I want to thank much. you for coming on to the show and I wish you continued luck. It's my pleasure, Charlie. You're helping a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming and watching today. Every week I will bring you people who are authentic, who tell the truth, who are genuine, and want to serve people in a very, very positive way. I think we got the story behind the Bill Borton story today. And do yourself a favor, get to know Bill. You'll be better off for it. Thank you very much. See you next week at 1.30. What's your story? Thank you.